Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. I can't even find our end up found it. Hi friends, don't mind me just eating my $16 bag of nuts that I didn't know was $16 and then was too embarrassed to put it back after I was at checkout, but I shouldn't have been embarrassed because they should be embarrassed because a bag of nuts this size shouldn't be $16. Welcome to the world, girls. Were you so, at so Air One? Was, no, I was at, you know, that place by Grammy and Popos. Oh, that's that basically that Air One. Has great shit, but fuck you guys. It's really excellent shit. It's very... It's like an indoor farmer's market. True, that's exactly what it is. It's like it's all... so expensive. Yeah, but if this was like in a glass jar and like organically sourced nuts and fruits, fine. Fuck you. But this is a bag, bitch. I know what's up. I don't want to say this, but there's no other way. It's not organic and it's $15. I don't know. Let's see. Um, Plant-based protein for sustained energy. It says no artificial colors or flavors. How do I know if it's organic? It would say, right? The fact that they need to say that on a nut bag. I know. Why the fuck would you dye nuts? Yeah, what the fuck does that even mean? What are you dying? What kind of nuts are in there? Every nut? Mm, $15.99. We got roasted almonds, cashews, Classic. and walnuts. I, okay. say, I prefer a pecan to a walnut. I really think anyone sane would, but I think walnuts just have more met benefits. I thought I'd been eating dark chocolate because that's what that looks like, right? But there's no dark chocolate in here, so what is that? Um, dry. Yeah, what? That's dried ginger. Okay. And those shouldn't be confused. Doesn't taste like ginger, so yeah. that would be. <laughs> Doesn't have the consistency of ginger. I'm gonna say this was a fucking ripoff. I think you are. I don't want to say that. We can't, cannot, literally take this seriously, Roxanne. We cannot take any more financial L's. No, I, I, am, I mean, I am not recovered from the tea episode. You want to talk about it? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. First things first. Um, I am about to owe. Over a thousand more dollars on my fucking car. Let's talk about financial L's. Your girl valeted her car because oh, yeah, that was I haven't the heard this. option where I was. There was no other option. It's not like you could self park. Only valet. Ten dollar valet. Valet my car, and the, when I get to my car to leave, the door is already open. The guy opens the door. Like I don't see him open the door. It's just already open. So then I um, pay for it and get in the car, close the door, drive to my house. Get to my house, your girl can't open the door. The door handle just now is not like like rubber. Like there's no, you go pull on it and I can't get out of the car. And I was like, what the fuck? Um, I've called them 72 times and they are non-responsive. Like, I've left every message. This woman keeps picking up the phone. She's like, I've told them to call you back. And I'm like, but they haven't? She's like, well, that's not really on me. I'm like, is there an address I can go to? Because I will drive there. Like, clearly somebody pulled too hard on my door handle and snapped some kind of cord inside. Okay, so here's what happens next. Now, you know how sometimes the roof on my top wouldn't go down and sometimes it would, but most times it would? Now it's not going down? at all since I got it from the, me the mechanic that you and I picked it up from. So I call Volkswagen and I'm like, hey, when can you do this and how much is it for the door and the thing? And they're like, ooh, it's probably gonna be more than a sensor and a cord. So I think that it's gonna be, we need your car for at least 72 hours, ma'am. And to diagnose it stuff, not to do the work. <gasps> for diagnosis, it is 72 hours and $300. Then I proceeded to call, and for the convertible part, I can't go to a different place because I have to go to the dealership because, no, I called that mechanic that you and I picked it up from. I called the old mechanic I used to go to. None of them will touch a convertible top. So I called literally 15 places. 
they were all like, you have to go to the dealership. Then I called my dad. My dad was like, yeah, for the top, dude, you have to go to the dealership. And I was like, ugh. Who knew that was a thing? Fucking knew. So then I finally was like, okay, fuck it. I'm going to give you the car on Friday. But you and I have that Saturday thing. That's when I texted you. But it's literally $300 for them to just tell me what's wrong. Fuck you, guys. For a diagnostic. For a diagnostic, bro. You're like, I'm bringing it in to tell you what's wrong. The the top doesn't go up. Like, I'm Who's diagnosing wrong? it for you. Here's what's up. Why is this not letting me be the center of attention? I don't know. It's so rude. It's so far. Okay. Here we go. Gosh. Um, but so, I can't get out of my car now without rolling down the window. And then my arm's too small to reach around. So, I have to physically hoist myself out of my car. Oh my gosh. So out of the window and then open the door and then I fall forward in it. And then I keep the car on and then I open it while I'm in it and it like pulls me out and then I have to roll the window up. What? I had to take Grammy to something today and I have to take it to her, her somewhere tomorrow and she was like, what's happening? I was like, ah, exactly, Grammy, what is happening? You have to full on escape from your car. Escape. And my dad said, don't drive like that for that too long. I said, why? He said, because likely if that cord broke, the one on the outside might broke, you very likely are going to get stuck in your car. Like, nightmare. He was like, you'll, I mean, you'll have the other door, but you'll have to crawl across every time. <gasps> this is, they got, uh, what an inconvenience. And like, crawling across your car is like kind of hard. Yeah, it is because there's shit in the middle. Especially when Grammy's there and she can't get out without me. So, like, because the walker, I have to go get it for her. So, like, I cannot, like, what am I going to do? Oh, no. I know. So, you just had the diagnostic or you're going to drop it off? I'm dropping it off Friday morning because I have a doctor's appointment with Grammy tomorrow. So, I didn't know what to do. Oh, yes. I have to drive her. So, I'm going to reach around until then. Yeah. That's what's up, Steph. Um, That's what's up. So... So all of you guys, this is our brand new show time forever and ever. And we hope you like it. Locked in. Should we just let see what happens in the chat after I say that? No, you guys, we, I just had shit, which I'll tell you about. Um, and so we made the show later, but we thought by telling you in the discord and, uh, and the start time of the show that it would be, we'd be cool. Apparently we weren't though. We um, I want to know. I want to know why or what happened with you slash where you were. But before okay. we do that, I want to tell the people this show is the biggest beefs. Um, yes. Steph texted me a couple of things about beef this week. And you guys know Steph is super, this is going to make me sound so old and lame, but Steph is like so much hipper than I am <laughs> and so much in like pop culture and beef. And sometimes I'd be missing shit and Steph is like blah, 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 beef. And when she said something to me today and then I looked it up, I was like, oh my God, this is a thing. Um, because I know n- I usually miss out on some of the celebrity beef. So then I was like, I want to hear about all of it. And I want to just do a biggest beef in entertainment. Meaning yeah. Steph's going to talk about some of the biggest beef. I brought some old school beef. I texted my brother. He gave me some of the biggest sports beef. I told him he could do coaches, teams, players, like what the beef is. Um, who's got the beef? Where's the beef? And Where's we want to hear from you guys. What's the biggest beef? So the best way to tell us what you think the biggest beef is and why, streamlabs.com slash the world girls. Send in your thoughts. Get in those shots. It's a late night after dark show so stream labs in i hope you're all pissed drunk not all of you i hope those of you who enjoy a beverage or two are uh enjoying it at 9 26 and yes um what am i missing steph the patrons yes i have that which speaking of patrons patreon.com slash the world grows become a patriot patron today if you aren't already we have a lot of cool shit there and we're adding more and more shit we're getting on our shit and adding more shit yeah but sterling hopkins sebastian escalante sam red andrew thomas ash Singh, john lestrina ryan payne and terry hell yeah thank Um, you thank you thank you 
I just want to let you know, I just had a bite of what is definitely ginger. So now okay. I don't know what the other thing was. Interesting. Sometimes every now and then one thing escapes into a bag. Do you think that mm -hmm. happened? Well, the other two things are dried mango and dried banana, and it really didn't taste like either of those. But I guess it could have been a very dull dried banana. I don't know. There's definitely a mystery afoot. Mm -hmm. And I, by golly, I will solve it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. No doubt. Um, I want to go into the stream labs. It doesn't want to let me. That's fine. There's nothing there yet. I'm willing to face adversity if I have to of the website not letting me in. Yeah. There being nothing there yet is also major problems. So send it in. Send support. Give us love. Steph, in the meantime, uh, what'd you do? Um, okay, so Harry went to a boarding school. And that's new for me because I know it's more common on the East Coast, but I don't know many West Coasters who go to boarding schools. I Are actually there don't... boarding schools here? I guess there is. Like, there's one in Brentwood, I think. Um, but I don't know. I don't think so because I don't know anyone who went. Hmm. So, I mean, that's not really relevant, but it is relevant because it's like, I always am curious about the kind of people that go to boarding schools and how they've turned out and like what led them there and <laughs> what's the fucking vibe. So he had this alumni thing. It was like an LA alumni of the school and they are having a few events throughout the week. So it was the welcome like wine pairing and food. We'll be honest. The food was it was fine. It was fine. Um, was it at a restaurant? No, it was at a tennis club. Oh my god, bougie. Yeah, super bougie. And um, it was cool. What was interesting, it was fun because when we got there, I was like, fuck, I like, the older I get, the less I want to schmooze. I don't fucking like it. I know it's important for life and just like you got to do what you got to do sometimes and there's always cool people to to me honestly but i i just don't love it nowadays it, but as soon as i walked in i was like oh i'm with like bestie this is like gonna be it's just fun right. you know yeah. just fun to hang out with him and like we can do whatever the fuck we want like we, did no he know about. people there was he like introducing you to his old friends no he didn't oh. know anyone there well we didn't know who he was gonna know but he didn't know anyone there and quickly after this like group of I, they were like must have been like 21 i think they had just graduated and they were so cute but funny like it was just so it's so funny talking to early 20s and like seeing where they're at like they're all a lot of them were like at that phase where they're like i give up on men and i'm like girl you have no idea <laughs> Yeah, like you haven't even seen it. You haven't even been in the war zone. Okay, twenty one is yeah. early to give up. I mean, really early. Okay, like, I'm just taking. I'm just not doing it anymore. I was like, okay, yeah. I don't think anyone thinks you should be going that hard in the pain right now. You have a long, long time. So that was funny, and it was also curious being in a place at least for him i had no pressure because it wasn't my shit but it's like people were going up to him these younger people and threw him an ex in extension with me because they were like seeking us almost as mentors and i was or like guidance. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah that's so funny i'm so i'm so not there right now sweetie <laughs> you so are you so are uh, yeah, I guess I everyone has imposter imposter syndrome. But I hear you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it like feels weird. I'm like, oh, you want it's like this one girl was like, yeah, to me and Harry, which she this is like so so innocent, but it was just like I don't know. Maybe I was just being a little crazy. She every two minutes she kept joking and make when she was laughing she would grab harry's arm how old was she 
she was like 21 and okay. I was like so she's innocent I think but it's a little bit like girl please stop touching him I have to be so careful of this dude you know that is me I fucking touch everybody I talk to I actually thought of you and I thought of East Coast people where I'm like, I think this is just like way more normal and like with more like, I don't know, um, like fun and kind of in f- aggressively fun people. But I, It's definitely out here frowned upon. Like, and it never was for me. Girls, guys, like anything they say, I want them to know like, oh my God, I'm with you. Um, <laughs> and I've noticed it does not get a good response out here. <laughs> yeah I have to yeah actually, like, it does yeah, get a good I, response with women like uh, on women women like to be touched totally yeah and that's why harry and was the like men I, like it too but the women don't like it about the men about the men yeah, yeah i feel that and i do think like there is something to say be said about like if you probably read um a a book on how to network i bet mm. in a top five advice it will say make physical contact and engage how do you feel Steph when a guy you're clearly not like at you're not like alone at a bar with him you're obviously you wouldn't be but you're not at a bar with your friends and he's coming up like you're at an event a networking type thing and a guy is talking to you and he like touches your shoulder does that make you uncomfortable it doesn't make me uncomfortable but I'm like don't keep doing that because mm, mm. I think it's just like you don't I don't know like unless it's like Johnny you know like my best my best friend guy friend and friend where I'm like I wouldn't even but if it's like if it's someone I don't know yeah I probably even if it's a girl I wouldn't I would feel way more comfortable with one or two taps from a girl I just met but like I don't think I would yeah maybe I, the word is uncomfortable I'd be like yeah. I just don't know you that well interesting yeah Yeah. so I was like girl and and then she was like yeah so if you guys ever need me to get you coffee or do any and I was like I know I know (laughs) I was like and then I was like okay she's just like she's eager she wants to get in the workforce I can't knock I can't knock the hustle yeah I can't yeah but Okay, and then so that was basically. How did uh, did Harry think it went well? Like, was he excited to be there, and was it cool for him to feel? Um, like- he thought, yeah, yeah, he liked it. He thought it was fun. He, yeah, I think he was like, I didn't know what to expect, so it's neat. It's like it was cool, but it was definitely funny. Wait, I don't know. I do, I I don't do reunions or anything. Did you? Did your high school? Didn't you just have a reunion with your high school? Or I planned my ten years three years ago. Oh yeah, it was wild. But apparently, my college had its ten year. Or I guess I did that four years ago. Oh nine, I did that in in twenty nineteen. So five years ago, I planned. Damn. My year. But yeah, that's what you're talking about, which is crazy. Um, but. Yeah the college had it this last year and I didn't even know I was just with at Sarah Stratton's wedding with all my USC friends and they were like why didn't you come to the USC tenure I was like what the fuck are you guys talking about and were they all there I think because I graduated early but I walked with them that I didn't get like an email or something Oh my god. Because I graduated in 2012. But I I waited to walk with my class in 2013. That's the only thing I could think of. They were like, yeah, there was like a homecoming game and all the stuff. And I was like, but I rude. And they were like, Do you ever get emails from them? I was like, Yeah, I get a fucking ton of emails from them. They ask me for money every day. Yeah. So, so like I know these bitches have my email address. Right. So that's crazy because I never I got my watch. invite. Or they've heard the amount of shit I've talked about them on this show for four years. Yeah. And like, Fuck her. Like, Number one enemy. Yeah, but this just made me dislike them even more. Like, fuck off, sir. Yeah, that's fucked up. I don't know if my college ever did. I know I missed my high school reunion. 
It was a football game. It was like a not. Like oh, a game. okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, how was your high school one? Are you, you're friends with a lot of them. I planned it. So I thought it was sick. Yeah. Uh, it was like hundreds of people came. Um, I thought it was so fun. And yeah, my best friends, my group of nine best friends are all still best friends. And we all went together and pre-gamed it together. And it was like a fucking blast. That's and really fun. And kids and stuff. So they were so excited to like leave their kids at home with the sitter for Was life. it at a bar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Damn, that makes me wish I went to mine, but... You're if, still if friendly. We, you're still, you see everybody you want to see from high school. I do. I do. I just, I think like maybe in like 10 years, I'd be down for a little, one. That could be fun. Cool. Mm -hmm. Are you guys going to do another one? If I plan it, I guess. Yeah. Really annoying. Our, the class president is supposed to plan it, um, but she didn't. So I did. <sighs> iconic was that right before we really became close or I don't think about it I don't think so because 2019 was right before the pandemic we did it Thanksgiving of 2019 so that was a couple months before the pandemic so you, you must know? have been planning it while I was staying with you was that 2019 yeah you and I have racked up some years yeah I know so but maybe you just kept that like because I, I remember you telling me you planned it but i don't remember you pl actively planning it really all i did was pick a bar yeah call them, make sure that they and like reserve the top floor for us um i didn't pay for drinks for everybody so it was like i got a drink special or something and then i sent out invitations i made like a canva invitation and then sent it out to my class made a facebook group and that was kind of the extent of it. It wasn't like a huge, huge thing. Yeah, not really. Yeah, that's true. That's that's actually nice. Like you did it the right way. Like not too much. It didn't need every like all these bells and whistles. No, it was just everybody wanted to see each other. And like I didn't have access to our class funds or anything. It's like not like I was gonna rent out a place with my own money. Um, so I just like it probably took me about like 20 hours. Not bad. Do you know, I was talking to Kim and I was like, it was before our Wednesday show. No, it was after. It was after our Wednesday show. And I, she's like, oh, yeah, how was your show? I was like, good. It's like fucking insane. Roxy wasn't feeling good. And she was supposed to just do an hour. And she did the whole show. And she's like, why would you make her do that? And I said, no, no. absolutely <laughs> would not i not <laughs> first I, I i approached the situation three different ways first i said don't do it <laughs> then i realized there's not a chance she's not gonna do a little bit so i said do what you can yeah and then i said i like dealt like with her i had to accept who she is and said yeah. okay do an hour yeah, yeah. and then she just did the whole thing and she's like i thought if i didn't bring it crazy. up she's crazy roxy's crazy <laughs> what I thought if I didn't bring it up, you'd forget. Like, I, if I didn't throughout the stream, be like, it's a bit of that. Like, if I just didn't no, bring it up. No, I definitely didn't forget. I was just wait. I was like, I need to let the butterfly fly. If she doesn't want to fly. Nothing you can do when it's something Nothing like, you can do. It's no. like, you are, you're such, you're a work, work, work Rihanna girl. You know, Lauren LaGrasso tonight sent me this video of this man who I, I am very familiar with his work, but he was talking about like, if he could do it all again, he would change okay. his life so that he didn't work as much. And she just sent it to me. And it's like, but I don't wish that. Like, She said no message. She just sent me the video. <laughs> I was like, not so subtle. And I love working i don't think i'm gonna be on my deathbed saying i wish i didn't do that she said listen bitch <laughs> you're gonna get this message dude unbelievable and like i fucking love her and she does know me so i do understand she's trying to say oh, something we love her but that is like so passive i was like 
what? Like obsessed, but just like not me, not for amazing. This um, <laughs> that is very, very stay at home mom vibe. Like just gonna leave this right here because it's like I'm just doting over my beautiful child all day. The funniest part about it is like anybody who knows me well right now knows that I'm like very happy. Like, right, right. This is not my depressive period. I am fucking soaring right now. <laughs> like, send that was, to me that's also another thing Kim said. She's so funny. Kim, my sister has like a huge love for Roxy. And, and vice versa. I kind of, yeah, about vice versa. She said, I was telling her, I was like, yeah, it's crazy. We both, both of us got hit on the, at uh, our cars the same week. And she's like, how does Roxy always like have such a great vibe, even when really bad shit <laughs> happens? <laughs> Dude, it's like I said, if she was here, she'd say, "Story of my life." life. Yes. <laughs> Dude, just, I was like, you should tell her that. Honestly, like I think that was like she was working on. I, I am working that. on. It. <laughs> yes, complaining less and just being like, yeah, whatever. On real rejects recently, I've just been really going hard in the paint about DPC stuff because we're watching all these people's. You know, like it's a big trope in movies. People have dead parents and shit. Yeah. And I'm always Pixar. like, GPC, whatever. And somebody wrote a comment the other day. I fucking forget what video it was on. But it was just like, I mean, at first I thought it was really cool the way that Roxy was able to, like, make light of the situation. But now I'm curious if she really needs help. <laughs> it's like, a little bit of calm A, a little bit of calm B, bro. Relax. They, like, you're watching too many of my videos because it, could, it shouldn't have gone to sad. Right, like, it, <laughs> It hits if you only see me say it a couple times. A couple times, right. <laughs> every video. Right. You know there's an issue. Right. That's it. The, every time I go read comments, it's so... F the one thing that I just can't get over is how you can say something and you know what you meant by how you said it and, and quite literally added things like, this is my opinion or uh -huh. um i liked it but it just wasn't my favorite and then someone takes that as i don't understand how steph could hate this and like why would she even be on this panel talking about this and it's like bitch who the fuck said i hate it who who said i hated it yeah yeah i mean your words are, <laughs> are not, not your words <laughs> this is not what you said so it's like word and Word. then, like, the crazy, like, the, like, is she ever gonna give something a compliment or whatever the fuck it is? And then it's, like, two you? minutes into the video. No, not that. But I'm just saying, like, I compliment everything. But, <laughs> like, they were, the they, it's the, certain fandoms are the most gnarly about that shit. It's, like, DC, Snyder. Yes, yeah. Oh, my God, bro. Like when I was talking about Joker, I felt like people were so sensitive over that property. I haven't the trailer yet. I mean, it's excellent trailer. Like, yeah. It's an excellent trailer, but you know yeah, that's what they one of the comments said. Roxy should have been on this panel. I can't believe you put Steph and uh, Chris was on it. Like two people who didn't even like this movie. At least Roxy liked it. And I was like, I quite literally said I liked this movie, but it was a really <laughs> painful watch. Also. <laughs> Like, what do you want from you? Anytime somebody says that to me, first of all, I also wish you put Steph on this channel. I hope she has every single win ever and hope she, any job that I have, she's welcome to, bitch. Second of all, okay, but you are on the panel. So what are you supposed to do? Take my brain and put it in yours or like try to say what I would say. You're human. Those are your thoughts. <laughs> like like you, crazy. so you just said that's what, what your comment is saying is, why the fuck didn't you put someone on the panel who has my exact opinion on this? Yeah. <laughs> like, like... Why didn't you put me on the panel is what that person is writing. <laughs> um, so biggest beef, me and Steph versus the internet. Versus that's, the internet. That's number one. Um, my other biggest beef is me and Steph versus the Streamlabs. Que pasa? What, que, what the hell? Yeah. Do you want me, I can catch you up with some beefs in the meantime if that... Yeah, or send in your, at home, send in your favorite beefs. Um, and then if there's, like, artists that you think have the biggest beefs, make Steph 
maybe we could do a two for one special tonight. Steph has to sing from one of the artists and I have to sing from the other. So like if it's a Britney Christina beef, we have to pull and do karaoke from each of them. Fine. Just made it up. Should be a blast. Um, yeah. Send in your beefs. Send them in. Send in your top request shots. Late night show. Uh, feels like it should be a shot war show, but at least a shot. Come on. Come through. I agree. Go. I know. I'm like, I'm going to spark up and wait for you guys. Enjoy. Sounds yeah. fun. Uh, it is. Okay. So tell me about a beef. And I want to. Listen here, Missy. Hold hmm. on, let me set the vibe. Yeah. Listen Glad here. Oh, shit. What happened? Hold on, I gotta get this right. I keep blowing out the, the match. Listen here, yeah. sweetheart. Getting close. Boys and girls, <laughs> I have a story about three rappers. Hey, Doc. Kendrick Lamar, Drake, Jersey Jake, Drake, Champagne Poppy, and Cole World, J. Cole. <sighs> okay, so there's been a long time beef between specifically Drake and Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, I didn't even know J. Cole was involved at all in this. What happened? <laughs> so J. Cole was... He just offhandedly got involved and then it got it like so many events have happened in the past week. But but the feud between Drake and Kendrick has been longstanding because it's kind of like a battle of the top spa. But if you're a Drake fan, you clearly think it's Drake. And if you're a Kendrick fan, you clearly think it's Kendrick. Okay. Because one is giving something they're just different. You know what I mean? But they both have like hardcore fan bases. And I think like a lot of people who are like just straight rap, it's Kendrick. But a lot of people are like, how can you not discuss the fact that he has more hits than the Beatles being that being Drake yeah. in the context of what, like the best rapper? Like does numbers equate to best or is it like about lyrics, you know? So the way J. Cole got involved is because I actually didn't realize this happened in the song because you guys know I am in a moment of silence with Drake. I'm not listening to his mu new music. Yeah, both. Yeah, because and I we are both long-standing Drake fans. I mean, first mixtape albums, I was there. I was a Drizzy gal. But he is standing with Tory Lanez and has made shots at Megan The Stallion, which is just, I cannot rationalize. Right. So I, I just can't get past that. And it's actually affecting people because there are legitimately people, legitimately people out there who don't believe Megan The Stallion was shot and that she's a liar. And I can't think that Drake has had not had an effect on that because he straight up said she didn't and it was a lie. And that goes out to millions of people and then people are uneducated and don't know the story and they just believe Drake because he said it. Right. Right. So I just, for all that, I'm like, I'm instantly on Kendrick's side before reading this, except mm -hmm. I fucking love J Cole. So I don't want him to get hurt in the, in the meantime, but so Drake's last album, he dropped a song with J Cole called the first person shooter in that song. Um, Cole and Drake brag about being the big three rappers in hip hop alongside Lamar. And then a few, last week, Kendrick Lamar dropped a track on Metro Boomin's new album with Future, which is like, I don't get the future drama and I don't know how involved he is because Future and Drake used to do collab albums together. They have like at least two, I think, together. And, um, but this song like that dropped and Kendrick was like, motherfuck the big three. It's just me. And the internet fucking lost their shit because they're like, what a clear stance that he's like, you guys aren't in my fucking league. Fuck yeah. you guys. So this like unleashed a battle war. And then the next, like everyone wanted Drake to say something or drop a diss track, which there is talk that he has diss tracks coming. Joe Budden on his podcast said that it's like definitely happening. I think my camera is glitchy, but I'm going to keep talking if you can hear me. You're fine. Yeah, it's glitchy, okay. but I can hear you perfectly. Okay, great. 
And then, so J. Cole was dropping his new album, the, or it's an EP, Might Delete Later, which actually, there's some fire fucking songs on it. Okay. In it, he clapped back with a song called Seven Minute Drill. And he it, he says that in the song, Cole mocks Lamar's wanting, waning popularity with his latest album. And his, uh, he said his second shit, which could refer to Lamar's second album, Good Kitty, Good Kid, Mad City. Uh, basically, he was like, your shit puts me to sleep. Uh, let's see. This is in uh, his song. He said it in his song. He's dissing Kendrick, and mm-hmm. it's not that bad. Like, there's nothing that's like. Draw, like over the line but, but why you, you, why is he coming for kendrick all of a sudden because kendrick just dropped the song because saying kendrick like said, fuck the big three fuck the big three mm-hmm. because that okay. was a direct so, reply to jay right. cole's yeah. lyric yeah i'm with you okay that was kind of shady of kendrick then i guess yeah yeah it's kind but of I like i usually am just like kendrick all day but that's right right mm-hmm. because because who cares if they think they're they are though like if you're just looking at just numbers and best raps it is like you could still be number one kendrick but it is a big three yeah yeah for sure for sure i feel you um so yeah so ken so j cole kind of snapped back but then he the next day was doing the Dreamville festival, his festival, and he apologized for the diss track. What did he say? He said, uh, I just want to come up here and publicly be like, bruh, that was the lamest, goofiest shit. And I pray that y'all like forgive for the misstep and I can get back to my true path because I ain't going to lie to y'all. The past two days felt terrible. He called it the lamest, goofiest shit from, like, he just did it. Yeah, he just did it. I guess he probably wrote it really quickly, like, released it, and then everything else was rendered, you know, and just so added Ken- the song. This is Kendrick apologized. No, no, this is J. Cole at, after he... J. Cole apologized after Kendrick is the one who came first? Yes. Wait, that's really cute. I know. So, like, half the fans are like, Cole, what the fuck? And then there's half the fans like me where I'm like, that's really cute. He doesn't, he's like, fuck this. Why are we beefing? That gives me a lot of love for J. Cole. I know. Yeah. So, so honestly, let's, we're going to, I will, I do want to listen to the, the, when, Drake drops a diss track for Kendrick because like honestly I hope it's really bad and I hope I can laugh at him. Somebody sending karaoke and make Steph sing the current uh, Kendrick song that says fuck no big three it's just my <laughs> yeah. I want to hear it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, speaking of which though in the stream labs Mike Joy said biggest beefs Taranga and uh, Hiromatsu. Oh, the, he's talking about Shogun. Oh, Taranaga and Hiromatsu from Shogun. Oh, wait. Can we talk about this week's episode? I mean, I'm like sick about it. Okay. Can we like really quickly spoil the two episodes ago? I, I won't spoil it completely, but there's a death. And the way this motherfucker dies is so. Are you talking about a younger person? Yes. Okay. So quintessential for this character, how he's been the entire time. But that was the dumbest on screen serious death I've ever seen. But I love the way the show did it. No. Yeah. Because it's like, that's what this fucking person would do. And it was just like, I was like, is he really about to take him out? And then that happens and you're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That was unpredictable, dude. Unpredictable. When you think you know, you know. That dude. reminded me of winning Game of Thrones, um, the ma- mountain versus whatever. Oh, yeah. The, and you think it's going yeah. one way and then the, and it's like, oh, oh this, my God. Yeah. 
Oberon. Yeah, you're like, oh, he won. Yeah, Oberon. Yeah. yeah, that was fucking nuts. And then last episode, I was like, there's no fucking way. There's no Me too. I hate, and then you, I know. But I get it, but also I'm so devastated. But- Devast like we couldn't have done this like any way. other way. My maybe guy? we couldn't have, but maybe we couldn't have. I don't know. There's been a few times like that where, like, with the gardener, I'm like, that's how we had to do it. We had to do it that way. So Streamlabs in your favorite beefs, guys. Um, that's a good one, Mike Joyce. Mike also sent in Roger Goodell and his hate boner for the Patriots. Um, I actually I'm just catching up on Dynasty, uh, and it is wild. I'm on, like, episode seven or whatever, so I'm on deflate gate with the four-game suspension, and Goodell, who was, like, fucking butt buddies with Kraft, and then everybody was pissed after Spygate, so he gave Brady that four-game suspension that every single person was like, that was way too much. What the fuck? Like, you gave him nothing, and then you gave him way too much. Uh, it is the beef that that started between Goodell and the Patriots I, I, is like insane. But I also think that Goodell is like such a biggest, the biggest piece of shit ever. So those are my thoughts on that. Thank you. Um, Should we bring in Ash? Yes, but let me just read Jess Kuo in the stream labs who said, for some odd reason, all I can think of is the rock and Vin Diesel. I mean, that's a huge beef, huge beef. Good one. Really. The grown really man. Beef is next level. Uh, Ash actually sent in a stream labs. I'm going to read it and then we can bring him in. He said, Katie Perry versus Taylor Swift was a pretty big beef. I feel like it was like a decade long. I'm surprised they actually squashed it. I think it's a really good call. Ash, let's bring you in. Let's talk about it. Steph, I'm going to put up the overlay. You bring him in. Three, two, one. Yeah. Iconic duo. Uh, Ash, you think that this is a bigger beef than um, Taylor Kanye? No. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. was this beef? Uh, Katy Perry tried to hire a bunch of people out from under Taylor Swift during like one of Taylor's tours in 2009 or something. And since then, they just... Or maybe it wasn't 2009, maybe a bit later, but yeah. Uh, she tried to take her team like backup dancers and stuff holy shit yeah they i think there was a couple of different things that went down and it's always crazy when it's these celebrities because it's like truthfully we probably only have five percent of the details of why people really hate each other like right. it's not like they come out and publicly say to us some of the things um that really go on behind the scenes or like people they know or shit that's been talked or whatever it is I was looking at this list and on this list from Good Housekeeping, Taylor and Katie were on there. And this is what it said. It said, the two pop icons have been good friends for years, but it all went south in 2014 when a fight erupted over some backup dancers who left in the middle of Taylor's Red Tour to go work for Katie's Prismatic Tour. Uh, Is that how you say that? Taylor then released a song called Bad Blood but she later revealed was about an unnamed female artist who basically tried to sabotage an entire arena tour. Katie then fired back with Swish Swish, a song believed to be a a diss track of her own. It's hysterical because obviously everybody knows Bad Blood. What the fuck is Swish Swish? But okay. Um, And then it says, thankfully the bad blood between these two have ended at last with Taylor and Katie eventually making peace over the years. Katie extended, uh, ended up extending an olive branch literally by sending Taylor an actual olive branch in 2018. And the feud's end was confirmed in 2019 when Katie posted an Instagram of cookies from Swift's kitchen and the words peace at last. Katie then even appeared in Taylor's you need to calm down music video where the two stars hugged while dressed up in an adorable matching burger and fries costume. Yeah. The more you know. Yikes. Yeah. That's, That's dramatic. I wonder why Katie wanted Taylor's backup dancers in the first place. Right. Yeah, I don't know. And if she knew or if that was a management call. What the fuck Swish Swish? I only know it because she performed it on SNL 
and she got that backpack kid flossing. Yeah. Oh, I kind of remember. Like that. sounds. That's where. Oh, these lyrics are fucked. If they're about Taylor, says you're calculated. I got your number because you're a joker, and I'm a courtside killer queen, and you will kiss the ring. You best believe. So keep calm, honey. I'm gonna stick around for more than a minute. Get used to it. Funny, my name keeps coming out of your mouth because I stay winning. Lay, lay him up like swish, swish, bish. Another one in the basket. Can't touch this. Another one in the casket. But it gets even worse. Your I feel like this tired. is super catty. You should retire. You're about as cute as an old coupon expired. <laughs> and karma's not a liar. She keeps receipts. Katie. 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 Wow. Who knew that was about her? Swish, swish, bitch. You're expired? Do you know that I've seen Katy Perry in concert twice? And I do not really like her. Yeah, I... Teenage Dream was my favorite song of last decade. Straight up number one favorite yeah. song of the whole decade. That's a complicated relationship. Truly. I liked her a lot, and then I watched her doc, and then I didn't like her. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, most people really work on trying to have a likable doc. Yeah. Dude, are you watching Gerard Carmichael's reality show? I'm not caught up. You told I need me you watched to. the first episode. This episode yeah. was fucking crazy. Oh, gosh. Do you have any, like trailer he's just openly cheating on his boyfriend in the dock and like it's showing therapy sessions of theirs and they're like are you being monogamous and he's like yes and then we're flashing to like him not <gasps> that's insane it's insane i can't i really i i really <laughs> I really need to know if the population of men who have ever said, you know, just doing what men do in reference to cheating. Is that a small population? No, or, there's like all or, these stats about how like it's like 75% of men. And like that's just normalized amongst the culture. Ash, speak like, for of you. Men. I need to know of men. I've dated two people in my life and they were five years apart. Uh, like there was a five year gap. So. Uh, Speak for the rest of your people. I I, I think I'm bringing down the average. To the <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Very good. I just there's can't. Gotta be, this is such a sexist comment on me, but there's got to be more men that cheat on than women that cheat, right? Like there's got to be more men than women. That yeah, cheat. I think I women like are that's increasing. The general conception, but I feel like it's easier for women to cheat. Like it's easier for women to get some. But they don't. Yeah, but yeah. The, <laughs> the thing is, is that like generally speaking, obviously there's exceptions. I think, I think men will go for it when they have the opportunity. Right, but it's less, it's leave. more sexual and less emotional. Like, there's actually, like, a way worse percussion, repercussion when women cheat. Because I do, generally speaking, think there's, like, more of an emotional thing that happens. Whereas guys, I just think, like, are like, it's just sex. What do you yeah. mean? I'm obsessed with Ryan saying, what do you mean, <laughs> your people? I'm obviously talking about men. No, just men. Your people. The penis yeah. havers. The men. The mon well, my friend group yourself. is four women and me, so. <laughs> well, speak for your people then. <laughs> people yeah, I don't know. The doctors of Chicago. Uh, and I also think it's way more prevalent in LA than it is in so oh, yeah, many other areas of the sure. country. Like, and it's almost gotten much worse with Instagram and like where you can just follow someone, they follow you back, and suddenly you can just have full conversations. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Like, 
anyone Social in the world. Media. Man. Man, it's, it's just like, if you can't handle it, you can't be on it. Right. Like, if you can't handle Instagram, go away from it. Get out of the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, uh, I just don't get it. It's like, just don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, ask so, what else is going on. What are their beefs? Uh, I don't know. I was trying to avoid rap beefs because there's just so many of those and they keep popping up and dying down and suddenly two people who were enemies suddenly are teaming up against someone else. Like, it's too complicated for me. Uh, yeah. I thought about The Rock and Vin Diesel. Uh, Where did that start? I assume on like Fast Six when The Rock put out that. I know post. they both like wanted to alpha it, but like, was there one incident or was just all of them? I the first I heard about was when The Rock was like, "Oh, my female co-stars were great, but some of my male co-stars do not show up on time." Yeah, but was that the first time that there was beef, or what happened? Like that's the thing we like never get to know the full story. I, I feel like that was the first shot, but yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, totally. Um, okay, Ash, my friend, who do you have beef with? Um, name them. <laughs> need to know now. There's this Jimmy John's on the University of Illinois campus uh, in Urbana-Champaign, and I ate there three times in my four years there, and got food poisoning every time. So, hey, can I tell you something? After yeah. the second time, that's on you. It was like years apart, and they were the closest one to the electrical engineering lab. So, if you get only... food poisoning from the same restaurant twice, it's on but, them. But you get it three the... times, it's on you. On the flip side, I hear you, but on the flip side, that is the fairest way to outlaw someone or to declare beef. Like, that is. Yes. Evidence. I tried you three like, times across years. Yeah. But what does that say about Ash that he tried them three times? Okay, they literally were across the street from that the lab. That he's a great guy. Like, we were working there at 3 a.m. Jimmy John's is across the street and open. So people, we just went there. But when I get food poisoning from somewhere once, I never go back. If I did go back and the next time I went back, I got food poisoning. You better believe that I would like run for the hills. You're kind of a savage for that. <laughs> like that's kind of iconic. Of if you. it was like Benny Hanna, where everyone blows so much fucking smoke rightfully up their ass because just fucking dink, and you were got it one time, and you're like, I need to give them another go because everyone's talking. Like everyone loves this place. Then I could see that. And I could possibly see a third, but for no, a no, Jimmy no, for a Jimmy John's, it was purely convenience yeah, factor. Be honest, we were working third, with... Be honest. I mean, it's it's truly obscene waste of your time, but I do think it's pretty legendary. Food poisoning is the worst. To give three three goes like you you tried like you could divorce happily like you left it all on the court. How much would somebody have to pay you to go there again? The price of a sandwich. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! This is a you problem, my dude. I, the price of a sandwich. Oh my god! If if I was working late night in the lab again, I would. Like, How much would somebody have to pay you to go there the night before your wedding? The cost of the wedding. <laughs> yeah, because you know you're going to be poisoning. <laughs> Risking it all. I mean, they could have, you know, changed ownership. I don't know what's happened in the 10 years since I graduated. My God, that's fucking ridiculous. Um, Ash, on that note, a true icon, nobody like you. Yeah. This for you. Don't don't beef too hard with anybody else. You don't. Okay, Steph. Goodbye. Yes. Ash. Love ya. Three. Three. Two. Two.
Bora. Yeah, nice. Very nice. Yes, great success. I thought you could never get it. I Okay. Um, do you want to know my favorite beef? That's my least favorite beef, but like the biggest beef that I have just become so fucking obsessed with throughout the years. What? Sarah Jessica Parker and Kim Cattrall. This oh. beef is like so insane to me imagine working on what is one of the biggest shows of all time for right. years next to somebody every single day and then like kim cattrall hates sarah jessica parker so much that she quite literally will not come back to the show because she hates her that much and has publicly blasted her. Like when Kim Cattrall's parent died and Sarah Jessica Parker publicly was like, I'm so sorry, Kim Cattrall. Kim Cattrall was like, you fake ass phony bitch. <laughs> like just what actually has gone down there? Right. Like, and Sarah right. Jessica Parker seemingly does not hate Kim Cattrall. So what happened? I need well, to believe that it doesn't have to do with a man let's go through this for a second yeah okay we're in december of 2004 Cattrall appeared on friday night with jonathan ross where she admitted money was part of the reason that the show ended she said i felt that for six years it was time for us all to participate in the financial windfall of sex in the city when they didn't seem keen on that i thought it was time to move on so i remember at the time she wanted the four women to negotiate together and Sarah Jessica Parker was like, no, I want more money. Okay, let's go to May 2008. Okay. A report in the Telegraph addressed the rumors that Parker and Cattrall long had tensions over money. Cattrall long, uh, Parker was given an executive producer title in the second season, which bumped her salary up to $300,000, causing Cattrall to reportedly negotiate for a higher salary. The Telegraph reported the crew members said the girls were not happy about this and wouldn't even sit with Cattrall at mealtimes. Okay. 2008, the report also addressed the 2004 Emmy Awards where Parker, Nixon, and Davis all sat together while Cattrall sat by herself. In response, Cattrall said, are we the best of friends? No. We're professional actresses. We have our own separate lives. Uh... Though in the same report, Parker said the cast were, so Sarah does a said the cast were friends. She said, honestly, we're all friends. And I wish I saw more of Kim. She mentioned money and no one should vilify her for that. People made a decision that we had vilified her. 2008 in June, Marie Claire asked Cattrall about the rumor that she had been holding out on making the first movie. In response, Cattrall said, four years ago, I was going through a painful public divorce the series was coming to an end. My father was diagnosed with dementia. I felt it was time to be with my real family. A year and a half ago, I was sent a script. I was ready and strong enough to revisit Samantha. In some ways, I'm glad we waited. The script and the experience making the movie was the best possible reunion. Fast forward. In the same okay. interview, Darren Starr, the creator of the series, touched on the rumored drama. He said, I think you have to draw the line between what's going in the gossip columns and what's going on on set. You can't create that kind of chemistry. When you do a series for so many years, you can't fake it completely. 2009, New York Post said Parker and Cattrall were no longer speaking. Yikes. Making everyone on set of Sex and the City movie very uncomfortable. Um, 2009, L asked Parker about the rumors that Cattrall didn't get along with the other cast members. She said, I don't think anybody wants to believe that I love Kim. I adore her. I wouldn't have done the movie without her. Didn't and wouldn't. So Sarah Jessica Parker just keeps remaining saying like, love her. <laughs> um, okay. 2010, Daily Mail brought up the L comments to Cattrall. And she said, I think Sarah was right. People don't want to believe that we get on. They have too much invested in the idea of two strong, successful women fighting with each other. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Then later on, cast in an interview from Marie Claire. Parker said, feelings get hurt on set. And Nixon said, it hasn't always been smooth sailing. But the idea that we're somehow adversarial is ludicrous. Uh, same interview, Cattrall shared her disappointment and the perceived feud. Okay, so Cattrall seems to be trying to say it's fine. Um, Davis talked about tabloid story that she and Cattrall would eat in their hotel restaurant and not sit together. Oh boy. 
2016, years later, Parker did an interview with Time where she once again addressed the rumors. It was always so heartbreaking to me that there's narrative about Kim and myself because it just didn't reflect what was going on on set. Then Parker appeared on Howard Stern where she said the rumors over the years truly bothered her. Was every day perfect? No, but this is a family of people who needed each other. Um, 2017, they reported that there's going to be a third Sex and the City movie, but it was canceled due to demands from Cattrall who uh, Warner Brothers had given the much anticipated green light, but then Cattrall demanded they produce other movies. Um, okay, 2017, Cattrall tweeted that the only demand she made was to not do the movie. She claimed she said no to the movie back in 2016. Parker confirmed in Extra TV that there would be no Sex and the City 3. It's over. We're not doing it. I'm disappointed. Then in 2017, Davis also confirmed it's true that we're not going to film the movie. And then 2017, Pierce Morgan said, um, Cattrall says that will not do it. She will not do it. It's not for me. That was part of turning 60. I was very clear. How many years do I have left? And what do I want done with them? Is this boring you? Or are we in? I'm in. Okay. 2017, do you want to explain? The answer was simply, thank you, but no, I'm good. Uh, okay. And then in 2017, when asked whether she was friends with her co-star, Cattrall said they have never been friends. <laughs> oh, my God. And then she said, this is really where I take to task the people from Sex and the City and specifically Sarah Jessica Parker. I think she could have been nicer. I really think she could have been nicer. I don't know what her issue is. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, so I'm confused. Sarah, Je Sarah, Sarah Jessica Parker is publicly killing her with kindness, be being accused of being un the unkind one. And yeah, Kim and then Parker, is like okay. more out there. In 2018, Parker appeared on Ellen, where she was asked about the possibility of doing Sex and the City movie without Cattrall, and she said, "I think there's a period of grief and mourning, and then perhaps we'll consider, say, for instance, you playing Samantha." So a joke. Then on Watch What Happened Live, she was asked how she felt about Cattrall telling Pierce Morgan they were never friends. And she said she felt heartbroken the whole week. I was really, I found it very upsetting because that's not the way I recall her experience. And then in 2018, um, I told you that, oh, Cattrall's brother was found dead. And Sarah Jessica Parker wrote her condolences on Instagram. She said, dearest Kim, my love and condolences to you and yours and Godspeed to your beloved brother. When asked about her decision to comment, despite the feud, Parker told Entertainment Tonight, if somebody in your life, whether you're in touch with them or not, is suffering for any reason, it's voluntary that you want to convey condolences or sadness. Um, and then, let's see, uh, a source close to Parker told People that Cattrall's brother was announced missing. Parker privately called and texted Cattrall. However, Cattrall responded to Instagram post slamming Parker for exploiting her brother's death. In her caption, she wrote, my mom asked me today, what will Sarah Jessica oh, Parker, what, uh, when will that Sarah Jessica Parker, that hypocrite, leave you alone? Your continuous reaching out is a painful reminder of how cruel you really were then and now. Let me make this very clear, if I have not already, you are not my family, you are not my friend, so I'm writing to tell you one last time to stop exploiting our tragedy in order to restore your nice girl persona. <gasps> Kim Cattrall said that? Yep, on Instagram. Publicly. Okay, we're in 2018 now. U.S. Weekly reported that a source close to Parker said, not sure why Kim had to take it to this level. <laughs> I, oh my um, God. And another source reported that the two hated each other and they were odd since the beginning of the show's second season. 2018, um, Parker said she never responded to Cattrall's conversation with Morgan. We had this experience. It was amazing and nothing will ever be like it. We had a connection with an audience. Da, da, da. She's still trying to be kind of nice. Um, and then, let's see. Um, seems like all the cast members chimed in. Hey. Yikes. This is brutal, dude. That response on Instagram is like sad. That savage that was like straight up you're a fake ass bitch and i'm don't i'm not your friend leave my name out of your mouth crazy 
All Damn. public, right under our nose. We didn't even really know. Crazy. Crazy. Damn. Okay. Damn. In the stream lab, Jessica said wanted to add on to the SJP versus Kim Control beef. Kathy Najimi got involved supporting Kim Cattrall around the same around the time they were promoting Hocus Pocus 2. That was weird and made for an awkward press tour. Kathy Najimi supported Kim Cattrall instead Wait. of Sarah Jessica Parker. That's crazy. Wait. Do you That's see that? Cool. What? I'm going to look it up. Kathy Najimi, Kim Cattrall. Damn. We can well, all have separate friends. Okay, I guess that? she's friends with both. What? Like... I don't want to be like, whose team are you on? But whose team are you on? Okay, after that lengthy review that gave us all the tea, it kind I mean, of... it goes on for, like, pages more. Yeah. It kind of seems like they're not a good mesh. Like, they just don't understand each other. But also, this could be completely wrong, but this is how it's coming off. That SJP puts on the nice good girl persona... And, like, super hardcore to, like, a level that's enraging because people who work with her and for her probably see a totally different side. And she might really be, like, a little, like, bossy boo. Well, I do think that if you're in a show for multiple years and you don't, and you're an ensemble cast, and you're not willing to negotiate with the rest of the girls, something is up because she is the biggest star on the show, but it is sex in the city. It's not the Carrie show. No. And the fact that she was getting more money, it's like, you know, all the friend stars negotiated together. They all were like, fuck you guys, we're negotiating together. And that's what a lot of these casts do that love each other that are ensemble casts. Right. So I do think that's kind of shitty. Like, when is enough enough for you that you right. need more than the other girls? But also, I don't like people who publicly bash other people like this. Mm -hmm. And Kim Cattrall's response, like you, like you said, you fake ass bitch. Yeah, like that was like a written form of "I will grab you by the ponytail and drag you to the ground." And people have done horrible things to me in this industry, and I still haven't said that. Like, no. I would say that about somebody who like seriously like tried to stab me you know right the only thing i can think of and i don't even know if i would do it at this level because it's not my style either to publicly go out there with beef i i mean kim Cattrall really has to be like she is the fakest she devil ever she knew she was getting more money than us she wanted us to make less money she fucked with our bag she fucked with our actual livelihoods and probably mm -hmm. even stifled the show because it like might be more famous if people knew they were liked each other like, you know like there's something cool about friends like they all like each other in real yeah, life they sat together every lunch yeah and people like that like they like investing in characters and the actors so, and then to see someone be nice to the public and the opposite of who you are, it that that over years and years, maybe she was just like, fuck it, I'm gonna let it ride. Steph, I think our um determination from this show is that this is not a good time for us. Not a good time for us. I know. Should we go to bed? No, we have to hang in because if we go to bed at this point, we literally won't be able to pay Evan this month. So, it must persist. Must and we're paying taxes. We have to take out, guys, they charge us $800 in April for the year. What the fuck? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? We just found out about that. And I um, can only. We can only pay it in the business hours. Yeah. Okay. 
I will tell you guys, we Steph and I are doing something very cool this weekend, and we're making an episode of it. And I think we're going to try to put it out next week, um, so you guys can see it ASAP, which would be sick. So we might not even That's have a live show for next week. So we'll send maybe, yeah. Labs this week. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe we'll send after the fact. Yeah, yeah. Fact, we have. I mean, this is. This is what it is, and we have more beef to talk about, but send in your favorite beefs. Uh, yeah. Okay. John Get Bent said, actor versus actor or director beef can get pretty good. To invoke the spirit of Darina, I have to mention Ridley Scott Harrison Ford beef during Blade Runner, which got squashed eventually. Do y'all have any other actor beefs that were surprising? Hmm. I really want to know who the fuck Rebecca Ferguson was talking about. When? What did she say? Okay. You didn't know this? I was just about to say no. that. And I was like, it's so annoying. She obviously doesn't. Okay, so Rebecca Ferguson did an interview, which every interview I've seen of her, this woman just seems so lovely. I think she's so it's talented, fun. so that's so she great. Can unbelievably talented she's like really becoming one of my faves like i'll watch anything she does so good and she did an interview where she said that she's not going to name who it is and it was like in reference to the question but long story short she had worked with someone who was so fucking rude to her a crazy crazy rude and he's an a-list actor and and now everyone's gone on like this hunt trying to figure out who it is and who she's worked with. And people like The Rock have come out and been like, it's not me. Because people like thought it could have been him. Rebecca did she Ferguson. say that? Was she like, it's not him? Yeah. Or it says, who yelled at Rebecca Ferguson? Yeah, she said one of the A-list actors yelled at her. And the internet has shortened the list down to Jake Gyllenhaal and... um. Who is it? Hugh Jackman? Yeah, I think so. Not oh, Hugh Jackman. No. Hugh Grant. Oh, well, we know Hugh Grant be yelling. Yeah. Um, I think. Hmm. So, but I want to know what it was. Did she say what it was about? I did a film with an absolute idiot of a co-star and this human being was so insecure and angry because this person couldn't get the scenes out. Um, and I think I was so vulnerable and uncomfortable that I got screamed at and I would cry walking off set. That's what she said. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. I was just trying to look at there's one actor that like yelled at me who's an A-list celebrity I think you know. I was just trying yeah. to look to see if she'd done a movie with him but I don't think they have. Rock said hate seeing this but love seeing her stand up to bullshit. He's so corny sometimes. Rebecca was my guardian angel. I sent, sent from heaven on our set. I love that woman. I'd like to find out who did this. <laughs> He's such a dad. I love it. I wonder who did do it. I know. When did she do the interview? Uh, February 27th. I'm so been, curious. Yeah, it's been circling the zeitgeist for a few, for like a month now. Huh. Yeah. Damn, I'm I, like really trying to see if she did something with this person but she didn't i really was hoping yeah there was a connection yeah and uh, i'm who was the first person you said ryan reynolds i said hugh jackman and who oh, oh no but it was jake gyllenhaal, jake gyllenhaal, and jake hugh gyllenhaal. Grant. yeah well i wonder if jake gyllenhaal's like that why does the internet think that about him i feel like we haven't heard anything bad stories about him is that not true you know what sucks for Jake Gyllenhaal, and I hope this is just a me problem. Because Aaron Rodgers looks like him, I like him less, and I actually like you Jake think Gyllenhaal. Aaron Rodgers looks like Jake Gyllenhaal. Yes, for some reason, Wait, my what? mind, yeah. 
what are you talking about? Jake. Oh, Jones. my God. Because the reason I think that's crazy is because I think Jake Gyllenhaal is so sexy. And I think Aaron Rodgers is so unattractive. I. Okay, yes, they look like, dude. But I think I think Jake is way more handsome, but they look like. Oh, you're not alone. A lot of the internet thinks this. That's right? Not... I mean, like, I'm looking at side by sides, but, like, one of them is super sexy. Yeah, yeah, but because just implicit bias, I, like, see him and I think, ew, no, but then I'm like, oh, no, that's. Jake, I, I like mean, him. You, when I'm looking at these side by sides and all these websites who have said what you said, I see what you're saying. I'm yeah. devastated. Yeah. What? Right. No, oh, that's crazy. Get out of here with that shit. Yeah, I gotta drop that. You gotta drop that. Got to. Huh. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I'm trying to think of other... Oh, yeah. What is... Do you know off the top of your head the beef with Michael Bay and Megan Fox? Yes. She was super young in the Transformers movie. And he had her do, like, really... Like, like really sexualize the fuck out of her. And it made her, like, not want to act anymore. And, like, all these shots of her ass and stuff. And I think she was, like, 17 or something. Wait, I am okay. So this is just like an exclusive for us, but I just saw the second one, Transformers, for Jabby and a chart for Cinedate Cinepals, and I kept thinking she was twenty. I think Megan Vox is a really great actress, but. They have made her com- like a, just like a fucking sex toy in this movie. Yes. And the person I had watching it with, with was like, yeah, I feel like it's the director too, but I think their beef started way after on something like different. And I was like, I don't know. And I wish I had looked it up to know that's what it was about because I feel like that fucking sucks for her because it seems like it's like, if you don't watch other Megan Fox movies, you might feel like that's her choice. Like she yeah. made those choices and they're really like, she is such a one dimensional character. Mm-hmm. Damn. Okay. I don't know what Michael Bay's beef with her is. Right. Uh, but yeah, that's where it stemmed from. Okay. Um, My brother said, the biggest here's what he said for biggest sports beef he said muhammad ali and joe frazier which definitely um yeah red Red sox yankees forever Celtics, lakers forever but obviously we're biased nfl versus tom brady talked about that a little bit at the top um this is for uh christian hardesty and jake he says duke versus unc basketball michigan versus ohio state football and then he said, if we're talking about rivalries that don't hate each other, Bird versus Magic was a great rivalry, but they're actually they were actually friends. And then he said Jordan and Scotty Pippen currently. Oh yeah, because Oh Mar- yeah. Shaq versus Lar- Larsa and his son broke up. Oh, they did? Yeah. When? I saw it a few weeks ago. They made like a public announcement. What'd they say? They were like, basically like due to the, they were like over the family circumstances of it. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. But you what guys, do you guys think? be for fucking serious. Be for real. What did you think was going to happen? The grounds on which you laid were so wait Jess Cuosa is dramatic. they're back together <gasps> they got went back together a week after they need to they need I hate to meddle but they got I I don't see that being a good a peaceful time like the thing that I think people don't realize is there's multiple ones for everybody on the planet there's no the one for everybody yeah. there's so many and like just 
you don't need, even if that is a one for you, don't pick that one. Go with a different one that doesn't with come the, with trauma. Right. Right. It's just. There's 7 billion of us. Find someone else. Find someone else. It's too much. Like, you really want it to be, life can be difficult. Your relationship, it's the beginning, you, just you driving with one another and, like, getting to know each other should be, like, the easiest thing. <laughs> Jessica also in the stream lab said, Henry Winkler had beef with Tom Hanks. He seemed to lighten lately. When it first came out, I did a double take. Wait, what happened? Wow. <clears throat> I didn't know anybody had beef with Tom Hanks. Yeah. Or Henry Winkler. Yeah, me either. Those seem like two of the most likable people in Hollywood. We need more info. Need more info. Can you break it down for us? Also, shot karaoke. Like, yes. karaoke Send it in. Hook it up. We are not here that much longer. We're also here late night. Coming we have to a you. shot from Ryan. Oh, hell yeah. That's what we need, Ryan. Thank That's God what you're we need. saving us. This doesn't have to be a shot if you're not up for it. I but am. Maybe a, oh, maybe a double recap of what you've watched recently. Oh, I that's cool. That's cool. I personally don't care about beef anymore as I've lived through the 90s and 2000s where beef led to so many deaths like Tupac and Biggie, for example. That is true. Like, there yeah. is a point to which... Like, sometimes I see this beef and I'm like, you guys are getting, you're towing the line where it is becomes life or death. And that's fucking crazy. Because it's just beef and you think it's trivial. And then all of a sudden fucking someone dies. What? Yeah, that's, that's fucking nuts. We're only kind of talking about, like, stupid drama beef. Um, like, not talking about, again, watching Dynasty right now and going over the episode where... We find out about fucking Aaron Hernandez being a straight up murderer. It's oh, like, yeah. that's not beef to me. That's murder, right? Like, yeah. fucking Biggie, that's not beef. It's murder. Like um, OJ. That's, that's, dude, I, that's murder. I was crazy about, I mean, you and I have talked about this, but all the fucking puff shit. Oh my gosh. It's just like, and how many murders is he actually implicated in? I feel. Right. House explosions, like crazy shit. Like he's a, it's like straight up narco shit. I bet. I bet. I'm to, I was on this article from Bleacher Report and there's a beef and I can't find that much info on it. I think I need to watch videos on it because I'm, so enthralled by it. Cho Joey Chestnut versus Takaru Kobayashi. And they're competitive eaters. Hot dog eaters. Yeah, Joey Chestnut. And apparently they like fucking hate each other. And go after one another. But I want to know like what have they said about each other. Have you ever not never watched any of their videos? No. How could you not tell me this is my type of news? I don't know about the beef. I've just watched videos of them eating food. Oh, God, no. It's sickening. The hot dog shit is crazy. You have to dip the, bu the bun in water and, like, oh, I can't even think about it. Oh, my God, that's sick. They, like, swallow it whole, dude. Do they get a lot of money or what is it for? Yeah, I think you win the contest. I think it's, like, big money. And we watch that. I do. It's okay. I watch people fucking scrape wax. Just because it's soothing. People cleaning rugs, dude. Oh, yeah. That's your new thing. Obsessed. Um, so to Ryan's question. Oh, double recap. Of what you've watched recently. So I told you, and you're watching also, but you're behind on. Drug Carmichael reality show. And then you and I obviously have talked about Shogun. Um, I loved The Gentleman, which is. I'm watching it. The Guy Ritchie show that I just think fucking crushed. Where are you at with um, It's Always Sunny? I'm, I'm at a standstill right now. Like, Shogun's kind of fucked me up. 
So I'm at I'm I'm at season like I might be on season three, but I'm on season two. I'm for sure like yeah. we're showruns one hour a week. It's one hour. I know, I know, but then I like am on a sci-fi kick. So I I'm one episode. I have one episode left of Three Body Problem. Okay, and you much you love Three Body Problem so far. I do. I like it a lot. I I I do. I like it a lot. I think that really any show that comes out in a binge model for I don't watch as many shows as you so if I'm finishing it within like a week it, I have that's my way of realizing I really like something yeah but you don't like it like you like Shogun no like okay. to me it's like there's people nothing are saying like your Shogun. body's the best of the year and it's like then you're not watching Shogun that's no it. it's just it's a great show and it's really well done and there's some fucking cool, cool, cool features and char- great characters. But no, Shogun is in a league of its own. It's so good. So good. Um, other things that I'm watching that I'm really liking. Uh, d- d- let me tell you. Um, okay, I'm pulling up my list. Okay. I I'm liking Manhunt. Um oh, you know what I was really annoyed about? And I talk about this on Christian show that later tomorrow, but I was so annoyed about this. I'm curious if you were annoyed about this. And apparently I don't have a right to be annoyed about this, which I get, but did you watch Rami host SNL? Yeah. It was the special. Oh, oh, a lot of it was the special, yeah. The whole thing. The opening monologue, the entire thing was a special. But a lot of comedians do that. But he's totally, that's like what they do. I just, everybody was like, an un- unbelievable opening monologue. And I'm like, y'all aren't fans because you didn't watch his fucking. Oh, 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 right. You were just like. <laughs> everyone's saying like, he's brilliant. And it's like, yeah, no shit. Go watch his special. Like this was not, this was 100% of it was from the yeah. special. So yeah, like, yeah, and I just wanted new material because we're diehard fans of his. So I was like, I thought he did a fucking excellent job, but like, his sketches were funny. Yeah, uh huh. The on. fucking immigrant dad talk show, I think, should definitely be a recurring sketch. It is fucking hysterical. When I was talking to Christian and Brett, they were not familiar with. Gerard Carmichael or Rami Youssef. My whole family watched Rami Youssef's special after they saw him on SNL. And I was like, that's cool. That's what Christian said the point is of doing from the special. Yeah, of course. But welcome, welcome to the 21st century. Mm -hmm. Rami Youssef is a household name if you watch great TV. But isn't that crazy that I was sitting with two stand-up comedians and they don't know either of these two. And they're like, what do they really do? Like, what do they do? I'm like, they're stand-ups. That's what they, they're stand-ups. Yeah. And you have to see the Josh Brolin episode. Oh, yeah. You told me that. It's so, the first two sketches at least. Maybe it just, I just loved his energy throughout it. But yeah, three body problems. So I'm gonna finish that tonight. I think it's really cool. I, I think it's I fucking it good. scary. I definitely thought it was good. For sure. Yeah, there's some points. I'm curious to how it. you feel about the finale. Okay. Sure. Okay. Oh. Not... Sad. And then what else have you been watching? Um, okay. So on my list of recents. Um, I binged all of Girls Five Eva, uh, Grey's Anatomy. How I'm watching that? right now. I love Girls Five Eva, but the most recent season was not as good. Uh-huh. Um, the gentleman I love, Three Body Problem, I liked. Quiet on set was fucking devastating. And then I just watched; they just dropped a new episode of it. That was the uh, Nickelodeon. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So they dropped a fifth episode, which was an interview with. Um, three of the cast members from all that. And it was so fucking sad. And with more from Drake Bell. Okay. Dude, there's something weird about 
like sometimes I'm telling you, you know how I, with numbers, I'm dyslexic. Oftentimes I say the wrong thing with his name. I always want to say Blake Dell. Like, Ugh. and every time I'm like Drake, not Blake. Drake, not Drake, Drake. Bell. Drake Bell. Yeah. Um, I feel fucking horrible for him. Not to say that he's completely innocent for the rest of his life. He obviously fucked up in many ways. But oh my God. Like the more that you watch, it's just like fucking devastating. Um oh so watch the new episode of that. And then uh so... did I ever talk about the Vince Staples show? Did you watch that? Oh yeah. I didn't I didn't finish it. I I went through it in like fucking a few hours. It's so quick. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed that. And yeah, it was hit and miss like that first episode. It was a like, good moment and then lull. Mhm. What am I missing that I need to watch? I love my entire TV list on here and then um it says so at the bottom it says Bachelor, th- three body problem, Rami, more feelings, Caesar salad with crispy chickpeas. <laughs> you ever just in the note, right? Like, I don't know. What you mean. Or when you're texting someone, and you're like writing down what you're saying, like order pasta. But I gotta say, crispy chickpeas sound bomb right now. <laughs> like, they do. They do. I think I was looking up fun things to make in the air fryer. <laughs> yeah, that is a great thing in the air fryer. Three body problem, Rami more feeling, Caesar salad with crispy chickpeas. <laughs> yep. Full scent, full scent. And yeah, Jeremy, for sure I'm starting Fallout tonight, for sure. Me too. I actually started it. I saw the first five minutes and it's oh, cool. cool. Good. Um, Jess Kuo said, okay, she's giving us more update on the Winkler thing. Winkler got fired from directing Turner and Hooch. He blames it on Tom Hanks. Huh. Huh. I wonder what happened there. Interessant. Oh, yeah. 50 versus Diddy is entertaining beef. I mean, watching 50 come for Diddy right now has been He's wild. living. But he's like, ha, ha. <laughs> like, usually I, okay, so I have such an up and down relationship with 50. He was my fave, yeah, fave, fave. We in fifth same. grade, like, yeah, like all growing up. Get Rich or Die Trying still to this day, I think is like a top 10 album. And then he entered his troll phase and he takes shit so fucking far. And specifically whether this is like, because I'm biased or not, when the way he comes after women is so crazy sometimes that I am like, I just, I don't I, hate I you, but sometimes I'm like, oh my God, that was so mean. Like, I don't like when people are like, actually, it was like mean. But this shit is like peak troll because he's been saying Diddy's on some fucking weird shit forever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm with you. I think that, so same thing growing up. Um, Stump 101 was my ringtone forever. It was my first ringtone. Amazing. I love, I love 50. Um, then he got a little corny and then like did some mean shit. Then he came in for an interview at Afterbuzz in like 2011. And he was so nice to me. Oh my gosh. And I was like, oh my God, you were so nice. Like, so respectful of everyone there who's so nice and normal and cool and casual and calm that I was confused. Um, Maybe it's just an internet persona. No, I don't think so because he's he's said some, like, really fucking sexist things. And, like, why would that be an internet persona? Right, right. And, you know, a lot of, like, not to say that he's a conservative because I don't fucking know, but, like, a lot of people who I politically disagree with completely are are nice in person. So I'm not saying right. anything. I'm not saying that means anything about who he is. I will just say he was really chill and nice, like unbelievably. So, and um, then I was kind of like, Oh, and then now some of the shit he does is just really funny. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. It's um, 
I don't know. The shit that's coming out with the Diddy shit is crazy. Wild. Like, all the stuff with Justin Bieber, too, is wild. Wait, what came out about Bieber? It's like, I can't tell if I'm in a conspiracy algorithm loop. But there's this video on Twitter going around where they're like, it's Justin B. It's like Odell Beckham Jr. and like Diddy in a club. And all of a sudden someone's filming Odell and the flash is on. And and then he like is like moving his arm and like up from around the waist area comes Justin Bieber. And people are like. Like, on Odell. Think, yeah. And it looks like you can't confirm anything. It just looks bad. Like bad but, or it looks like he's queer? Well, it looks like he's like could be sucking his dick in public like at the club or like at one of Diddy's parties. You don't know where it is. Huh. And it's so and I think it might just be like a bad angle video. But then they kept pressing this thing of like um, throwing all these different videos of interviews that he did, like Diddy did with. Wait, what does um, that have to do with Diddy? So Odell is, is one of his parties. Sucked, but and, and he's standing there, or he is just like at his at one of the party, his parties. Yeah, and he's there in the video. Oh, huh. yeah, but they say that Diddy groomed a bunch of like the younger artists and like made them do shit. Whoa. So that's how it's connected. Huh. But that could be all just alleged. It's just that's how crazy the Diddy shit's getting everywhere. Where I'm like, and I Yeah, well, I feel some like of the Diddy people... shit, one of the most recent Diddy things uh, was, like, assault things was from a man to Diddy. Yeah. There's a ton of them that I'm seeing. Hmm. What do you say? What do you just whoa, like whoa, whoa. There, it feels like there's something about being a celebrity that makes you stop being a human. Like, and not yeah. All of them, like, how is that possible? A lot of them. Like, how is that humanly possible? I don't know. I think about that all the time, and I'm like, a lot of you are on very weird shit, and that's crazy. Or I guess it's just like a lot of highly successful people too. Yeah, that's true. But most highly successful people are celebrities. Like, yeah. Like, think Facts. about the fact that like Elon Musk is a celebrity. Yeah, just because like, real. why is he a celebrity? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. I feel like growing up, I couldn't name rich people. I could only name artists. And now I can name a ton of rich people. Right. Why? capitalism like growing up uh, like if somebody said do you how many billionaires could you name would it, i feel like i only could have been like bill gates bill gates huh yeah because and bill gates is a fucking genius too yeah like he did he created that shit yeah 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 it's not like he just invested. Mm -hmm. Other beefs. We have to get out of here. Um, and hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are we going to do? Yeah. Maybe do another stream this week or something. Yeah. So it wasn't you. All right. Um, thank you guys for staying up with us late, though. Yeah. Fun times and we don't have beef with you. If you were watching the show live, we ain't got beef with you. We don't. I don't We're real ones. Yeah. Um. That be it. <laughs> that be it. That be it, bro. That Beyonce Virgo shit. Oh my god, Sam says she needs to wake up in five hours. Oh my gosh. Good night, Sam. Um. Good night to all, and to all a good night. May your beefs be funny and not real so may your beef be medium rare and not well done yeah try to be so poignant right now 
may they yeah just be really deep oh yeah you know what you're inspired right now by what the poetry offs in in shogun she's so good you guys just rap battle on the cash like with the beautifulness uh beautiful like what do i do like to the do sadness that? of a dagger would we parter than the blade of grass and i was literally like thinking i was like oh they have the shit memorized like and then he's like oh you're great at this and i'm like you guys oh, are you, freestyling. You're on the spotting? You're freestyling. <laughs> I thought they were like reading from a text they had memorized, like when people quote the Bible. I'm seeing these women and these like courtesans, and I'm thinking, am I woman enough? Because these are scholars and entertainers. The two women, the one who we are obsessed with, um, and the one who is wreaking havoc on our lives. You know, with the yes, sun. yes, yes, yes. Are the two most beautiful women I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, they're like evil and good twin sister act. Too. You know what I also think is gorgeous? Who? Who she's like, I'm a washed up hag. The brothel owner. Oh yeah. It's like you could never, you could never be a washed up hag. She's like stunning. I would come to the brothel for you. I mean, there's just all so hot. What's up with their voice delivery too? I don't like know. especially I don't like know. the evil one. She's like, that is not good yeah. enough. <laughs> I was singing that when I'm living here. I'm like, oh my God, stud. Like you're like Medusa in real life. Like this is crazy how you're talking. Crazy. Um, also crazy, thank you to Joe Rowe who just came in with big support. We appreciate you. He said, y'all don't have to do shots, but I think this is biggest beef. Mr. Freeze versus Dr. Stephanie Lake from Batman Beyond. Here's a clip for context or for content. I'm trying to remember in Batman Beyond, Mr. Freeze. So what is Dr. Stephanie Lake in this who killed Mr. Freeze's wife or what happened? Who is this? Let's see. Yeah, I'm looking it up. Will you play it for the pubs? Oh, I don't know. Maybe we'll get pulled down. No, no. Yeah, we will. I'm just looking it up. Yeah, I want to look it up too, but then I got to mute you. I'm muting you. Oh, I'm not looking at the video. I just Google searched. Okay, Stephanie is an evildoer. Bummer. Stephanie was hired by Derek Powers to help him with his radioactive radiation. Double radiation, okay. She suggests that she could clone him a new body with a baseline DNA. Stephanie decided to test it on Mr. Freeze, whose DNA was also destroyed by mutation. It appeared Stephanie and Fries were beginning a relationship, though she was really monitoring him for the success rate of his revival. Ultimately, Freeze finds that his new body is starting to fail. As a result, Lake tries to kill him and, and assures Powers that Freeze will not come for them, but Freeze escaped and put on a new suit of Freeze armor. He attacks her and Powers, freezing the latter and cornering her. Scared for her life, she lies by telling him that they were trying to help him. Unfortunately, Freeze does not believe her lies, and mm -hmm. Stephanie ends up getting frozen solid by Freeze. It's implied that she dies as a result. Listen, frozen solid does make big beef. That's like Sounds beef like tartare. Right. Sounds like she got what she deserved, Loki. Can you do an Arnold Schwarzenegger impression? It seemed like... Wait, fuck. Oh my, oh my god. <laughs> Are you me? Okay, wait, wait. Why does everything go back to Kermit? Hold on. Me, yeah, that's me. Oh. Uh, Arnold. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Better. Yep. Really good. I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be. I'll be back. It was so painful coming out. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. Wait, no. That's Irishy. Can you do one? Um, let's see. I'll be back. No. <laughs> Arnold 
It's me, Arnold. I love my donkeys. <laughs> it's me, Arnold. No, that's that's different. Arnold. Shorts and wait. Arnold. It's just enough. Uh, but not too much. Arnold. Oh. <laughs> oh, you like Arnold Schwarzenegger? You know what I think? We should do a whole episode of bad impressions. Yeah, for sure. And they can send in anybody and we have to try. Yeah. I am anyone. actually the world's worst impressionist. Nobody's worse than me. It's so hard. But I agree. Remember? We should do a whole show of it. Yeah, that. Remember we had Josh Robert Thompson on? Yes. And he was great. And we wanted him to teach us. But we and didn't. we couldn't we yeah. couldn't learn one. Even when he told us what to do, but we couldn't do it. Arnold. <laughs> um, Arnold. Arnold. <laughs> you said, can you do one, Roxy? I said, I'll be back. Nope. <laughs> no. It was the quickest try. Well, and I was like, let me try. Retreat. And then it was like, no, I can't. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Retreat, retreat. Here's what I've got. Stitch. That was the end of the list. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I have um, not really anyone. Loki. Oh, I can do a mean Jacob Black from Twilight. And uh, Taylor Lautner. Oh, yeah, Jacob, Jacob. Jacob. What's his duh. last name, Black? Jacob Black, yeah. Wait, and and then... Robert Pattinson's name is Taylor... Shared. No, wait. wait what? Think. Okay. Like, um, really? Yeah, let me hear Jacob and Lori. <laughs> Jacob. Okay, Kristen Stewart plays Bella. I mean, it's one of the most. Talk about beef. Like, <laughs> oh, this is. Dumb. I was in the chat and they said Edward. Uh... Not, I couldn't. I wasn't. I couldn't come up with it right now. I know that. What's Edward's last name? Colin. 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 I knew that. I knew that. I got that. How are you even like claiming friendship with me? I don't know. Days? That's so fucked up. We gotta get out of here. We have beef. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Wait long enough and you have beef with your own fucking cohort. <laughs> yeah, that's so sad. I'm so sorry. Um, okay. Well, thanks, Joe Row. That was the shit. Also, Joe yeah, Rowe, thank you. I don't know if we've ever seen you in here before. Forgive me. Thank you. Do you know Thanks. Joe Rowe? No, but legend. Truly. Um, later alligator, wild crocodile, and um, I hope you get exactly the day or night that you deserve. Yeah, bye. Bye. Edward Cullen. Edward.